Okay, I want to talk about some of the uh, selections I assigned for the final exam. Um, you're going to be writing four essays, uh, and I'll ask you a question on each of these essays, the selected ones that I assigned. So the first one is, uh, is female to male as, male as, to, as nature is to culture by Sherry Ortner. That's on 316. Okay, so that's a pretty, I don't like about three pages. Um, so I will ask you a question on Monday, and uh, so I would suggest that you read the stuff over the weekend, you know, so um, anyway, you'll have a couple days to, to do it, so you can read it when you get the question, but it's I think it's better to kind of prepare for it. So the question is, is female to uh, male, is female to male, is male, nature is a culture? And uh, Sherry Ortner is a, what's called a feminist philosopher. She's basically trying to, basically feminism, feminist philosophers believe that philosophy traditionally has been very anti-woman, which it has. I mean, women have always been seen as inferior to men. So uh, feminist philosophers are trying to remedy that situation. In this uh, essay, uh, what she's concerned about is trying to understand a certain what she calls a human universal and the human universal is uh, she wants to explain it and the, what she wants to explain is why women are universally devalued in all cultures. She, she starts her essay by saying much of the creativity of anthropology derives from the tension between two sets of demands. On the one hand that we explain human universals and that we explain cultural particulars. So you've got two different tasks to explain universal, human universals, and then things that are particular to, uh, to different cultures. By this canon, he, she says, woman provides us with one of the more challenging problems to be dealt with. The secondary status of woman in society is one of the true universals, a pan-cultural fact, yet within that universal fact, the specific cultural conceptions and symbolizations of women are extraordinarily diverse and even mutually contradictory. So what she wants to do is to understand the universal, the, the, human, uni the human universal of why women are devalued in all cultures, even though in different cultures it takes it will take different forms. Um, she in the second little part of her essay she says what I what do I mean when I say that everywhere in every known culture women are considered in some degree inferior to men. She lists three different ways in which that is true. First of all I must stress that I am talking about cultural evaluations. I am saying that each culture in its own way and on its own terms makes this evaluation. Okay, so this this is what this is a cultural thing. Three types of data would suffice, she says, to show this. One, elements of cultural ideology and informant statements that explicitly devalue women according them roles according them their roles their tasks their products and their social milieu as less prestigious than are accorded to men and male correlates that's the first one so elements of cultural ideology and informant statements that explicitly devalue women second symbolic devices such as the attribution of defilement, <clears throat> which may be <clears throat> interpret, interpreted as implicitly making <clears throat> a statement of interior evaluation. And three, um, <clears throat> social uh, structural arrangements that exclude women from participation in or contact with their realms, with some realms in which the highest powers of society are, are felt to reside.
Okay, that's three things. She, this is on page 316, 317. Um, then in, in on page 317, she, distinct, she talks about nature and culture. One way to explain the universal devaluation of women is to blame nature, to say, well, the re reason women are seen as inferior to men is because they are, okay? It's simply a fact of nature. She rejects that. She says that, that no one accepts that nowadays. <clears throat> so no one accepts nowadays. Well, may, probably somebody does, but very, very few. It's not an accepted view nowadays that there's anything inherently inferior about women. How are we to explain the universal devalu of devaluation of women? We could, of course, rest the case on biological determinism. There is something genetically inherent in the male of the species. So the biological determinist would argue that makes them um, the naturally dominant sex. And she, re she says no one, very few people believe that today. So she rejects that view. That you can explain the universal devaluation of women in culture. You, you can explain it by appealing to nature. She says that's not this doesn't work. doesn't work. Well, if women are not inherently inferior to men in terms of naturally, then what accounts for it? And her answer is that that it's because, and this goes, should make remind you of Freud. Her answer is that civilization and culture, the very point of civilization and culture is to dominate nature. Civilization and culture are different from nature. Civilization is constantly trying to dominate nature. Um, to try and, one of the things about nature that we are definitely trying to dominate, the fact is that na uh, nature makes us all die, and culture, one of the greatest uh, projects of culture is to conquer, is to put off death as long as possible, uh, the search for immortality. We build bridges, we build dams, we build houses to protect, us from, to protect ourselves from nature. This should remind you of Freud and Future of an Illusion, where nature and culture are at war. Now, she doesn't mention Freud in this her little section selection, but you should think of Freud in terms of what she's saying, the, the fight, the, the, the struggle between nature and culture. Basically, her view is this, that Women are not, they're not identified. She rejects the view that women are identified with nature. She believes that in all cultures, women are seen as closer to nature than men are. And because they are closer to nature, to, to nature than men are, they are devalued. Nature is in the pro, pro nature is in the, in, has a task of dominating nature, of dom culture has a task of dominating nature. Women are uh, are seen as very as being very close to nature. Therefore, they inherit all the the uh, all the associations of nature. So we what what she says is that nature what that culture basically focuses on women and sees them, devalues them, because they are associated with nature. Culture is in the business of dominating nature. Women are associated with nature. Therefore, culture dominates women. That's basically her view. Now, I'll ask you a question on the final exam that'll, you know, you'll have to write one page. Um, and I'll ask you a question based upon the selection. And so you'll, you'll have plenty of time to write it. So, you know, write um, uh, just when, when you answer the question, you know, bas basically cover all her main points in the essay, or ans at least answer the, answer the question thoroughly in one page. Um, anyway, so that's one thing you're going to be writing about. I'm not going to go too much into any more, because that's basically the, the point that she makes. So that's, um, that's on page 316, 317, 318. Uh, Sherry Ortner is female to male as nature is to culture. Okay. Um, I think that's all I'll do now. I'll do another video on a different question.